Hey guys, welcome to the channel and welcome back if you're a subscriber and you've been here before. But a few months ago, I did a review on this E2000 LFP from Pecron and it uh, remains one of my favorite power stations in that 2000 watt hour uh, capacity class. And I'll, I'll put a link up here if you wanna check that out. But what if you don't need that much capacity or what if the price of a 2000 watt hour power station puts just a little bit too big of a dent in the budget? Well, they now have the E600 LFP, which is basically a little brother miniature version of the E2000 with a, f a few differences. But it's about a third of the capacity and as you might expect, about a third of the price. So can the E600 LFP live up to the reputation of the E2000 LFP? Let's find out. All right, before we get into the testing and all that sort of stuff, let's jump back into time and get this thing out of the box just to see what you get if you were to buy one. <laughs> There's another box. So, cable case. I won't say bag because it's actually like a semi-hard material. This is actually the, the nicest cable case I have seen in a power station. Lots of space in here for other stuff as well. So we've got AC adapter, charge brick. Now this is very similar to the one that comes with the uh, 600's bigger brother, the uh, E2000 LFP. So you see what else we got here? We've got MC4 to aviation style. So one of those, I know that it's bigger brother comes with two of these, same cable though. And then standard AC computer style cable, and then a DC5521 to car charger. And then, oh, okay, and then it comes with an Anderson adapter to that uh, five pin aviation style. So if you've got solar panels that come with an Anderson style connector, you can still adapt them to the aviation style connectors that are on the front of the uh, 600, no doubt. All right, so that's the cable case. Very impressed. Pecron is really surprising me. They are putting out some really good stuff, so very impressed. Packed very well. All right, <laughs> this is literally like a miniature version of the E2000. Yeah, this is very cool. The difference is instead of having handles on the side, it's got a fold down handle. But it does have apparently uh, wireless charging on the top and it's got three AC ports, two inputs, one aviation style input right there and a DC5521. All right, and then it looks like it's got four USB ports. Two of them are type A ports. One is a PD 100 watt, one is an 18 watt, and then the two type A ports are both 18 watt. So you got two accessory DC5521s over here on the DC side, and then the standard 12 volt car adapter uh, port as well. So let's see, anything else? All right, I think that is about all I can share right now. So let me run this thing through the paces find out how much usable capacity it really has and what its inverter is capable of running. So let's jump forward and do that. I will see you in about three seconds. And we're back. All right, so it has been about a month since I uh, did the unboxing on this. But let's talk about pricing. So the price on this, I think the normal price on this, the list price is $6.99, which at list price admittedly would be a little on the expensive side for a uh, power station in this capacity class. And the capacity, by the way, is 614 watt hours uh, rated capacity. Now, that said, they are uh, currently running pricing and I don't know how long this will last, but I think it's basically $4.99 whether you buy it from their website or through Amazon. And I'll put links in the description below if you wanna go check those out. I think you might get the best deal through their website, but I'm not 100% sure of that. So you may wanna check out both just to be sure. But let's talk about some of the other specs. So this is a lithium iron phosphate LiPo4 battery chemistry. So it is rated for 3,500 cycles to maintain at least 80% of its value. So this is a 10 to 15 year life cycle piece of hardware. And in terms of weight, it comes in at about 20 pounds, which is relatively lightweight for a LiPo4 battery chemistry. And the AC inverter on this is a 1200 watt continuous 2000 watt peak AC inverter. And it does have some other tricks up its sleeve regarding the AC inverter, which I'll talk about in a minute. But let's go look at some of the test uh, footage on the AC inverter and see how that went. 
But let's try adding a heat gun on low and put some more watts and see what it does. You can see the little gauge there. It says we're at 75%. Now if I put this up in the next mode, the heat gun is going to start adding about 800 watts on its own. And that should put it into the 1600 watt range, which should trip the unit. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it trips immediately, so we get the overload indicator on the display. I can get it up to a thousand. And there we are at 1200. So it doesn't cut us off right at 1200, so there is a definitely a surge capability here. So we are right at the 1200 mark. All right, it has been about five minutes, no signs of shutting off, and we were at pretty much just just under the 1200 watt threshold. I have to say, I do like this little meter here that shows you how close you are to tripping. Kind of a little tachometer set up there. That's pretty cool. Now in terms of charging, you've got three basic charging methods. You've got the AC charging, which you use the uh, AC charge brick here. And there's you know pros and cons to an AC charge brick. On the on the con side, it's one more thing that you have to remember to bring if you need to charge it via AC. Uh, and I will say in terms of the other AC charge bricks that I have I've seen, this one is a very high quality one. Um, there are some cheap ones out there, and this is not one of those. This is actually a very high quality one. But one of the benefits of having an AC charge brick uh, rather than integrated it in is that if something were to go wrong with the with the charge brick or the AC adapter. You can just buy a new one and you don't have to send the whole unit back. So you can just get it, get a new AC charge brick. So that's, you know, what I would say is, is an advantage. Um, I do like the benefit of having uh, the charge brick integrated. So for me, this is a, you know, it's a con, it's not a pro, but it's a, it's a minor con. So it's not really, it's definitely not a deal breaker for me having an external charge brick. Now using the charge brick, you can charge this thing from zero to hundred percent in just about two hours. So relatively fast charging via AC. Now another option would be to use the included 12 volt car adapter to charge it through your car adapter. Now it's gonna take you probably upwards of, I would say six hours or so plus to charge it uh, through your 12 volt charging port on your car. So that's a pretty slow way to charge it, but it is an option available too if you happen to be driving around a lot. It's a great way to, to power a 12 volt refrigerator, by the way. Uh, have this constantly being charged while you're moving with your car. Have this powering your 12 volt refrigerator so it's kind of constantly renewing the, the power that the refrigerator is consuming. So that's one of the use cases that I think is pretty good for the size of a unit. Now in terms of solar, this is where it gets a little more interesting. So this thing has the capability of handling up to 500 watts of solar input. Uh, but if you're going to connect multiple panels, at least with this particular revision of the 600, uh, you do need to connect those panels in parallel, not in series. So be aware of that. It has to do with the limitation of the BMS. And I think that is something that they are probably going to change in future iterations, but that's how it is in this current version. So just be aware of that. Now, I did some testing in sol with solar in, a, in several different circumstances. So let's run those clips and see how that went. All right, let's 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 test this uh, Pecoron E600 with a couple of different solar panels. Since it does have two MPPT charge controllers on it, uh, we were gonna use both of them. So one for a larger solar input and one for a maybe a 100, you might be able to get by with a 120 watt panel. So we're gonna try this 120 watt panel down here and then we're gonna do this 400 watt panel from all powers here. Let's try this 400 watt panel first. I'm gonna use the cable, uh, the little aviation five pin to uh, MC4 connector adapter that um, comes with the E600. And we're gonna plug this into the bottom port. So this is a 400 watt panel and we're now over 75% on this panel. So 320 or so watts, it's probably about as good as we're gonna get. I'm surprised we're getting anything over 300 to be honest this time of year. And so with a 400 watt panel, you're gonna be able to top this thing off. Uh, let's say you're getting an average of about 300 watts. You're gonna be able to top this thing off in something like, call it two hours, which is excellent if you need to get rapid recharge on this thing. Now, if you've got more time to recharge, you don't need as fast a recharge rate. You could use the top port, which is a DC 5521, I believe. But let's go try that uh, to go powers 100 watt panel and see what we get with that. All right, now the Tego Powers panel comes with an adapter. It's got an Anderson connector here, as you can see, and it comes with an adapter to multiple tips. So let's see if we get any power out of this 100 watt panel. The top port has a voltage range of 12 volts to 18 volts. So we should get something here. Looks like the charge controller is starting to ramp up. 
All right, looks like we topped out at about 78 watts, which again, not bad at all. So if you don't need rapid charging, you could do 78 watts. If you've got a full day of decent sun, even a 100 watt panel is gonna to top, uh, top this power station off. Um, if you want to charge it faster, maybe you have a, if you want to be able to plan for, you know, a narrower time window of sun, maybe a couple hours, then maybe look at something like a 200 or 400 watt panel, and that'll get you in the fast charging zone. So as you can see, solar charging works just fine in this device, and having something like a 400 watt solar panel is an excellent way to charge this thing quickly. And if you already happen to have two 100 watt portable solar panels and you wanna connect those in parallel, that's certainly a viable option with this particular power station as well. And that will get you somewhere in the neighborhood of a recharge time of about five or six hours if you have decent sun during the day. Now that 400 watt panel will top this thing off in just a couple of hours with decent sun. Now if you had like partly sunny, mixed clouds kind of a day, it's gonna take more like five or six hours to charge this thing with something like a 400 watt solar panel. Now I always like to test power stations for their actual usable capacity through both the DC output and the AC output because you may be using it in either or both ways. And so let's go check out and see how different that is versus the rated output of 614 watt hours. All right, I have this fully charged. Let's do a DC discharge test and find out what the usable capacity is. The uh, adapter fits in there nice and secure. This is 12 volts, 10 amps rated. So let's go ahead and start dialing this up. I wanna see if we can exceed 10 volts or 10 amps. So 10.6, 11 amps, it hasn't cut me off yet. I can get it up to 12 and we're done. See, we've got a little indicator there, overload. Yeah, so we cannot quite get to 12 amps. That's actually to be expected. All right, so now we know what its limit is. Let's go ahead and put this at 10 amps and let it run. 10 amps on the nose. Check back when it's done. We are done with the DC discharge test and you can see here we got 538.56 watt hours. Call it 539 watt hours. All right, got this charged back up. Now it's time to do a discharge test through the AC inverter to find out how much power we can actually use via AC. So let's turn this on. And we'll see how many electrons we catch. Just tripped off. Let's see what we caught. All right, 559 watt hours. That is not bad, especially when I was pulling such a high watt load for this small power station. So as you saw, the usable capacity on this through both the DC and the AC is actually quite good compared to most of the other power stations that I have tested. So through the DC outputs on this unit, you're gonna get about 88% of rated capacity, which is very good. It's definitely above average. And through the AC outputs, you're gonna get actually about 91% of rated capacity, which is, is well above average. So I would say average from, from the many units that I've tested is somewhere between 80 and 85%. So the E600 gives you well above what I would consider average uh, usable capacity through both the DC and the AC output ports. Now I did test no load draw through the AC inverter and what I found is you will lose about 1.6% of your capacity for every hour that you have the AC inverter on, even if it's not uh, pulling any load. And it does not appear to have an auto shutoff. And that's important to some people. The downside of that is that you have to remember to turn your AC uh, inverter off if you're not going to be using it or you will deplete the battery over time. Now, but the upside is if you have a very intermittent or very low power draw uh, load on the AC inverter, it's not going to auto shut off on you after a few hours. Uh, it'll, just, it'll just keep running. Personally, it's neither a pro or a con in my book. I think it, it's just something to be aware of. Now, one thing I did wanna say about the AC inverter, this has one of those voltage throttling features that a lot of the newer units are now coming out with. So even though it has a continuous rating of 1200 watts, which we verified in our test, and a uh, surge of 2000 watts, the E600 will throttle down the voltage on, on resistive load devices that require more than 1200 watts continuous, uh, but less than 2000 watts. If you exceed, if a device tries to pull more than 2000 watts, it will immediately shut down on you. So if you've got a space heater or a toaster or something that normally draws, let's say 1400 or maybe 1600 watts, 
uh, the E600 will just throttle that, that uh, power down. It'll, it'll lower the voltage until you're at about the 1200 watt range and it'll just run it at 1200 watts in a lower power state. Now you're not gonna wanna do that with devices that have more complex circuitry in them, uh, but simple devices like incandescent lights, space heaters, toasters, and things like that, no problem. So what other kinds of things can you run? So I did some testing on that and you can see here that I tested a toaster and the toaster worked just fine. So then I hooked it up to my air fryer. Now my air fryer does spike a pretty hefty watt draw right out of the gate and that tripped the overload protection. So that's a no on the toaster oven. Uh, but then I hooked it up to my large full-size coffee maker. No problem, you can actually brew coffee with this thing. That's heavier lift than you might expect. Heating water actually does a pretty significant power draw, but 1200 watt inverter will handle that. I also did see if this will run an Instant Pot. No problem running an Instant Pot. And just for kicks, even though this is a little bit of a smaller power station, I wanted to see if it would run my full-size refrigerator. And in fact, it actually runs the full-size refrigerator no problem. It handles the, the watt load. The question is, how long will it run? And in my tests with my particular 12-year-old refrigerator, uh, full-size refrigerator at that, uh, I can get a, maybe just approximately about five hours of runtime out of my full-size refrigerator. So that's not a use case that you're normally going to use something like this for, but you could do it in a pinch and it would work. Now what about a, a large microwave, something in the maybe two cubic feet or maybe 2.2 cubic feet? That's really gonna depend on the watt draw. And most of those large uh, microwaves draw up to right around 1,000 to maybe 1,200 watts. A few of them are a little more than 1,200 watts. As long as the microwave is rated for 1,200 watts power draw, uh, because it has more complex circuitry, I think that is pretty much a hard limit. If it's if it's 1,250 watts, uh, I think you're skating on a little bit of thin ice there, and you might have some problems because that uh, voltage throttling could kick in, and, and that might cause some problems. So anything under that 1,200 watt draw will run, which includes most microwaves. All right, so there are a couple of, I would say, misses or things that are absent on the NIST that you should be aware of. Number one, there is no app support. It's not strictly required for something like this. Again, it's like, the, it's like the AC adapter being external versus internal. It's not a deal breaker for me, uh, but it is a nice to have, just not a must have. So be aware there's no, at least currently, there's no app support uh, for this unit. Also, this does not have UPS capability. So that was that would be another thing that would be nice to have, uh, but again, not necessarily a deal breaker, unless that's something that you absolutely need in a power station, in which case, this is not the power station that you want. Now this does have wireless charging on top, so that's definitely a pro. So on balance, if I consider all the various pros and cons, I still think this is a very solid unit if you don't need things like UPS capability or app support. Um, and, and it doesn't bother you too much that you have an external AC adapter. Um, so those things aside, I really think this is actually a very solid unit. I was extremely impressed with its bigger brother, the E2000. The E2000 definitely rated as one of the best 2000 watt hour class power stations that I have reviewed to date. And I would say that this is ranks right up there with some of the best uh, 500 to, to 600 watt hour power stations. I think it's definitely a solid choice. I would not be afraid to order something like this. And I definitely think it's worth a look if you're in the market for something in this particular capacity. Pecron is obviously doing some very good work. And like the, the bigger brother, this one does also have a two-year warranty. So good warranty on this product as well. So hey, if you found any of this information useful, I really would appreciate a thumbs up on the video. It really does help. And uh, I do have a lot more of these kinds of things coming. So if you're into that sort of thing and wanna keep looking at what's out there and what's available, stay tuned. Those things are in the pipeline. Anyway, I do hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.